Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. First tonight, an axe murderer has been released from Risdon Prison on parole. The now 48-year-old man who cannot be named was a teenager at the time and confessed to killing one girl and stabbing two others in the 1980s. Community Corrections has deemed him fit for parole under the condition he is monitored intensely and does not contact his victims. It was 1989 when a 16-year-old boy committed the first of three callous acts, stabbing two young girls aged 12 and 15 in two separate and unprovoked attacks. A year later, a 16-year-old was found in a lake in Lena Valley bushland after she was slaughtered with an axe. I'd hate him even if he did feel remorse. But, yeah, I hate him. I hate him with all my being. He was sentenced in 1991. The now 48-year-old has previously applied for parole four times, each of those knocked back. To assist the parole board in their decision, a psychologist provided reports in 2013 and again this year, stating the offender has a very severe antisocial personality disorder and has been assessed as having a high level of psychopathic traits and he displays extreme difficulties with empathy, understanding the emotions of others and having insight into his own motivations for his behaviour. Based on his good track record in prison, increased level of maturity and low risk of alcohol and drug issues, Community Corrections has deemed him suitable for parole on the condition he is under close and intense supervision. But the Australian Lawyers Alliance says more measures are needed to prevent prisoners re-offending in the community. There are people who come out of custody who will do their very best and they will succeed. There are people who will come out of custody and they will do their very best and they won't. We need to support all of them. The Department of Justice was contacted for comment. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's racing industry says it has lost confidence in the Office of Racing Integrity. It comes as the Minister reveals a review into the state's regulations will look into the functions of the office and TAS Racing. The Tasmania's Racing Minister, one thing is clear. As the Minister for Racing, I love the racing industry. You and I both know that. On Tuesday, she announced a review of the Racing Regulation Act, today revealing a broader scope. The independent review into the Racing Act 2004 will include the functions of both the Office of Racing Integrity and TAS Racing. Racing clubs say they've been calling for action for a long time, pointing to troubles within the Office of Racing Integrity. This hasn't just happened overnight, it's been brewing for a while. Uh, there's been a huge turnover of staff there. Um, and the, and the club's view and the industry's view is that TAS Racing's administration is way too big for what it delivers. The industry for probably the last two years has been crying out uh, and requesting government to do something. Parliament heard today several senior officials who worked within the office are under investigation and around 20 staff members have resigned since 2018, many still to be replaced. Uh, the industry's lost confidence in, uh, in uh, the Office of Racing Integrity uh, because they you know, continually have this turnover of management and, and staff. They would like to see TAS Racing and the Office of Racing Integrity combined, something the Minister has already ruled out. I'm not saying that we necessarily should bring them together, but I'm saying the review should consider whether or not we should. But the Minister's already come to a conclusion before the review's actually been done. The Racing Minister says the review will be undertaken by an independent expert who is yet to be named, while well, the industry hopes it will have a say on the terms of reference. If the, the Minister's fair dinkum and it's going to follow through with a decent review, I mean, we're probably going to get one shot at it to get it right. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Disability services advocates say high need students are being shortchanged by $32 million a year. The Education Union and Tasmanian Disability Education Reform Lobby joining forces to call on the state government to address what they say is a long running problem. Teachers are able to do their best to differentiate the work, but unless you have extra people in the classroom being able to help these students when it's required, then it doesn't, doesn't really help the situation there. And this is really critical because if students can't learn to read and write and operate in a classroom like their non-disabled peers, 
how are they going to be able to get out of school and get a job and do all those other things. The state government says the budget includes $56 million for students living with disabilities. McCain and its Smithton site employees have reached a resolution in their pay dispute. The Manufacturing Workers Union says the in-principle agreement is a victory for its members, handing them more paid leave as well as pay rises above CPI for the next three years. The dispute had waged for six weeks, with the company found by the Fair Work Commission to have unlawfully locked out workers during the period. COVID vaccinations will be mandatory for all staff members at Mona. Owner David Walsh has confirmed employees will be given a reasonable period of time to receive the jab and be offered help with making appointments. He says the move is harsh but necessary. Visitors to the museum do not need to be vaccinated. Now, Tasmanians age 12 to 15 can have a COVID vaccine from September 13, with bookings now open. They'll need to attend the appointment with a parent or guardian. And for the second year running, the Launceston show has been cancelled due to COVID restrictions. But the state's biggest show will go ahead, bringing relief for stall holders whose calendars have been looking rather bare. Diane Alexander worked her first Launceston show when she was 10. 55 years later, they're still a big part of her life. We have an old saying <laughs> as showmen, you're either marry into it or you're born into it because no one would be silly enough to get into it. <laughs> it's hard work. The third generation showwoman is one of many stall holders left stunned by the cancellation of this year's event. Crowd restrictions mean the show wouldn't be viable. We feel that if we'd have went this year and had a negative experience for a lot of our vendors and our sponsors and our exhibitors, we probably wouldn't have had them people next year. It's the second year running the event has been cancelled. Many others around the state are suffering the same fate, including Bernie and Brighton. It's important that the bigger shows run so that the little shows can feed off the bigger shows for them to run as well. I haven't worked for 18 months with my equipment and the way things are going it doesn't look like things are improving. The Royal Hobart show battling restrictions too, but today organisers confirmed it will go ahead. We're already going to take a haircut uh, on this, but the government assistance certainly minimises that. Supported by $300,000 in state government funding. It's part of uh, our society, our social capital, our ability to enjoy our lifestyle here. They're trying to overcome crowd limits by selling tickets for half-day sessions, but total attendance still won't reach the 40,000 they see in an average year. It's critical that we get at least one show up this year, one big show, uh, so that people can make some money and we can keep the whole Tasmanian show circuit alive. Shows are a way of life for some. To them, the show has to go on. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Grace Tame has joined a team of leading child safety advocates calling for a national conversation about sexual abuse of minors. The initiative, led by Australian Federal Police, hopes to end the public stigma ashamed. around People talking about child abuse. Researchers found a family. fifth of parents find the topic too confronting. Shift that discomfort to where it belongs, at the feet of perpetrators of these crimes. Additionally, police receive around 60 reports of child exploitation every day. A group of Tasmanian lawyers is seeking to overhaul the state's drug laws and legalise the use of cannabis. The Australian Lawyers Alliance has drafted the Cannabis Decriminalisation Bill, which would allow for the cultivation, possession and use of small quantities of the drug. To possess no more than 50 grams dry, 150 grams wet, and the effect of this will be that we do not see people coming before the court for minor possession of cannabis. The bill would allow people to possess two cannabis plants, bringing Tasmania into line with drug laws in the ACT. Attorney General Elise Archer says the government supports the use of medical cannabis, but does not support the proposal put forward by the Australian Lawyers Alliance. The Royal Hobart Hospital will now be able to purchase equipment to help save more lives thanks to the Archie's 100 event, which raised $100,000 last month. The event was to honour Archie Green, who died in a boating accident and donated five of his organs. And the wonderful people that work here that deal with tragedy every day, it was really, really cool to be able to give back to them. But we also um, raised a lot of awareness around organ donation through Donate Life and 
uh, donating blood through the Australian Red Cross uh, Lifebloods. The money will be donated to the hospital's paediatric unit. Today marks one year since a live export ship sank off the coast of Japan with 40 crew members lost at sea. Tasmanian tourist guide William Mainprize was one of two Australians on board. His girlfriend says the past year has been deeply traumatic with many questions surrounding his disappearance still unanswered. Charlie Gray and William Mainprize's paths crossed in Egypt in 2019. We had actually met on a boat there um, coincidentally. The pair had begun planning their future in Tasmania together. Whenever Australia opened up, the idea was to yeah, go to Launceston in Tasmania and yeah, try to get some land and yeah, build a little life there. So yeah. On September 2 last year, her world turned upside down. Will was one of 43 crew members working on the Gulf Livestock One, which had almost 6,000 cattle on board when the ship sailed straight into the path of a ferocious storm. These were the last videos the 27-year-old sent as the vessel started taking on water before it capsized and sank. Really safe. Wild weather. The Japan Coast Guard called off the search a week later after finding only two survivors. But Will's family and friends were determined to keep searching, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars in a crowdfunding campaign. Just an unbelievable, uh, I think, global community response to this issue. Um, that was quite overwhelming. We had pulled in some helicopters as well and had a couple of really wonderful, incredibly supportive and talented people uh, on the ground in Japan looking for us and it was quite an incredible effort. On October 28, the day before Will's 28th birthday, the last helicopter flew overhead. It's hard to describe how difficult that time was. It was so defeating. Charlie says this tragedy has raised questions about standards in the shipping industry. The ship should never have sailed. It was not fit for sale. It was in horrible condition um, right, right from the time that it, it took off and, and also in previous journeys as well. Will's family says the past 12 months have been extremely difficult, sad and traumatic for us all. Our family has been in a state of frozen grief. We haven't had a service or had any type of closure given Will is classified a missing person and the death of the missing 40 men is still only a presumption. As for Charlie, she's taking it one day at a time, trying to live life the way Will did. Maybe it sounds cheesy, but I really feel like I honour him in my daily life. Um, Will is such a gregarious lover of life and people and the environment. I feel like I, I've been really changed by the love that we had and, and what he, you know, how he taught me how to live life. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmania News. After being forced to move online last year, Tasmania's premier mountain race is back with a new starting line. Runners in this year's Point to Pinnacle will begin their gruelling journey from the top level of the car park at Rest Point Casino before making their way to the summit of Mount Wellington. On the race day, you've got everyone at the start line, which will be up here now, which is kind of hard to imagine, but it's going to be amazing because it's a completely different space. We're hoping for over 4,000, so I think we had 4,300 in 2019 and last year it was cancelled due to COVID and, and hopefully we return to those numbers. Registrations for the 21 kilometre event and the more tame Point to Public are now open through the Point to Pinnacle website. The event will be held on November 21. Ogilvy and Newtown High Schools are on track to merge next year with a name for the new school revealed. The state government confirming the name will be Hobart City High School. It comes after questions were raised in Parliament over whether the announcement had been delayed. Can you confirm that a decision on the name has been held back because your colleague Madeleine Ogilvy has said that the name of Ogilvy High would be changed only over her dead body? True. It's just Is not it a true? phrase that I use. No. So um, I think you misrepresented no, me and I would like assault. you Again. to apologise and withdraw the statement. The two campuses will be known as Ogilvy and Newtown. 
James Bogue will eliminate plastic shrink wrap from all its beer bottles by 2023. The Tasmanian brewery says the move will remove nine tonnes of plastic from landfill. It's in addition to an early commitment to use entirely renewable energy by 2025. In an extraordinary quirk, a local football league's grand final this weekend will be played between two sides which have never faced each other before. While in the state league, Clarence is out to prove the doubters wrong when the Roos jump north. Clarence was tipped to tame the Tigers in the elimination final, but the path to the decider is a dangerous task. We're really keen to prove everyone wrong and um, there's excitement around that. The Roos are one of the few teams to down Launceston this season. The Blues, until last week, had an unblemished record at Windsor Park. Although Clarence had a lean 2020, the coach says the side has been building towards this opportunity. I think over the course of the last 18 months they've gained belief, and especially over the course of this year, because they've been in challenging situations. Regional leagues begin grand finals this week with Lilydale the hot favourite to cap off its 100th anniversary with an NTFA Division 1 flag. It'd just be awesome. It'll keep, people, keep our club alive for longer as well in the long run because what success keeps people around. The Demons bowed out of last year's scale down season, unlike their opponent, Old Launcestonians. Last year was the best thing, I reckon, for the club in a long time. Um, we all came together at the start of last year and to, to choose whether we were going to do it or not. It hasn't been bad at all, it's been great. And the NTFA women's decider has a quirky twist. The two finalists, Launceston and Old Launcestonians, have never played each other before. Their only match during the season was called off due to poor ground conditions. Probably sitting at eighth halfway through the season, so weren't expecting to make finals really, but um, very excited. Some of the girls that have, haven't even touched football before prior to this season, they're super up and about as well. Launceston joined the league this year following the TSLW's collapse. Tasmania's NBL1 teams are vowing to return stronger next year after lockdowns and border restrictions effectively axed this season. Most clubs are optimistic of retaining some of their talent, but one coach has signalled his position is in jeopardy. For the second year in a row, Tasmania's NBL1 teams have had the rug ripped from under them. The season scrapped by league bosses, a decision not unexpected, still not an easy pill to swallow. The players, uh, we're all a bit flat. So it's really tough for everyone, but I think the league's handled it very well. Added frustration for both the Hobart Chargers and Northwest Thunder men, who at third and first respectively, were firmly in championship contention. And I thought, it was only a given that we would take this thing all the way. Who had the better shot at glory is up for dispute, but one thing the rivals can agree on, both have unfinished business. Let's go around again in 2022 and see if we can um, yeah, hopefully have a season that, that we can finish off. The Launceston Tornadoes, like most sides, have been training for the past seven weeks under the slim hope the season could be revived. Full credit to them that they've been able to stay motivated and, and in until this point. Now the immediate challenge will be fending off lucrative offers from other clubs for big names like Keely Froling and Kelsey Griffin. They're well sought after players and we know that, you know, they're, they're Opals and WNBL class players. For the Chargers women, there was no such success, languishing at last on the ladder. Coach Mark Nash admits it's unlikely he'll be at the helm next year. Yeah, we'll just sit down and work out, you know, what roles are potentially around and how I can help. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. And after a season with plenty of double headers and players out with illness, the Northern Hawks and Cavaliers say fatigue won't be an issue when the two sides battle for the Tasmanian Netball League title. Cavs has had the upper hand so far this season, scraping through by five points the last time they met in the semi final. Last year we were in a grand final but unfortunately we weren't able to get over the line and so I think there's a few of us in the team that are still you know a little bit hurt from that so it's going to mean a lot to us. The Crosstown Derbies are always always really competitive so really looking forward to being able to um, get this one done and bring it home for the rest of the club. The showdown at the Silverdome is on Saturday afternoon. Good evening. A warm day for the second day of spring with clear skies across the state. 26 in Hobart, Launceston 23, 19 in Burnie and Devonport. The state's top was 27 degrees at Bushy Park, Low Rocky Point and also Strawn. The friendly beaches 24 today, Flinders Island and St Helens 22, King Island 21, 20 at Scottsdale, Lowhead reaching 16. A cloud-free day right across the state today.
Further out, a middle level cloud across South Australia and into the Bight. Low to middle level cloud over parts of Queensland. To tomorrow, and a cold front will push its way over Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. A high will move over Western Australia. On the water tomorrow, north to northwesterly winds at 20 to 30 knots. Swirls to 3 to 4 metres in the west and south. And with that, there are a few warnings. A gale warning for the southwest coast, a strong wind warning for Storm Bay and remaining coastal waters, and an initial flood watch for the North Esk, South Esk, Meander and Macquarie catchments. The sunny skies were certainly short-lived with rain on the way. Hobart, Huonville and Campania all 18 tomorrow. Much the same in the north. Launceston rain and 17, 15 for Devonport and Georgetown. Burnie, Strawn and Wynyard rain and 15. Rain increasing for St Helens 18, Swansea 19, Port Arthur 18 the forecast. Looking to Saturday and showers for the west and northeast, fine elsewhere. On to Sunday, showers mainly about the west and south. And on to Monday, showers again for the west and south, mainly fine elsewhere. Capital cities tomorrow, Perth cloudy and 16. Darwin looking at 34. Brisbane and Sydney 24. 22 in Canberra, early rain for Adelaide and 16. Melbourne, rain increasing and 22. And it's still quite pleasant in Hobart, 20 degrees. Launceston sitting on 17. Devonport mostly clear and 13. And Kim, I hope you enjoyed today. It's rain tomorrow and a lot of it. Crazy. Summer to winter in a day. What happened to spring? Thanks very much, Laura.